When it comes to 3D printers, there are a ton of specs out there, and sometimes they can be kind of hard to understand if you don't know what you're looking for. Well, in today's video, we're gonna go over the 10 most important specs, in my opinion, that you need to know in order to buy a 3D printer. Hi, my name is Carl and welcome to The Real Ginger Tech. If this is your first time here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. So let's get started. Looking at buying a 3D printer, you're looking at all the specs and seeing all the different options you have there and getting a little confused. Well, these 10 features are probably, what, in my opinion, the most important ones you wanna look at initially when looking at a 3D printer. And to start it off with number one is gonna be the technology. There's gonna be two different types of printers. There is an FDM or FFM, both the same, just different wordings. And then there's gonna be SLA and DLP, pretty much the same, just slightly different technologies there. Uh, the main difference between the two is going to be whether you're using a liquid that you are then turning into a solid or a solid that you are melting and turning back into a solid. So I'm primarily gonna be focusing on FDM or FFM printers in, in this video because that is what most people are gonna to wanna to start out with. And FDM stands for Fused Deposition Material or FFM is Fused Filament manufacturing. Really, they're the same thing. It's just a difference between Kleenex or tissue. But essentially, they're both going to use a filament that actually feeds into a hot end, melts it down, draws out your image, lets it cool, then you have what you're printing. Moving on to number two being the material. You have a choice of either a resin, which is going to go along with those SLA printers or DLP printers or filament, which is what we're gonna focus on here today. Filament is gonna come in a wide variety of stuff. There's gonna be ABS, PLA, PETG, uh, nylon, carbon fiber, the list goes on. Moving on to number three now is actually gonna be your filament size. Filament size is gonna be determined by the printer you choose, or it can be used to determine which printer you're gonna buy. You're gonna see two different sizes out there, a 1.75 millimeter or a 2.85 millimeter. Well, which one you choose is entirely up to you. Uh, some of the benefits of going with a larger filament is if you're looking to print off stuff that's more structural than it is aesthetically pleasing or you don't necessarily care about the layer lines, then going with a larger filament allows you to go with a no larger nozzle size. Therefore, you can print quick and dirty and have something done. But if you're wanting something with more detail, more finesse to it, a 1.75 is typically more beneficial because it doesn't require the printer to work as hard as it does with the thicker material if you're printing with a smaller nozzle. Uh, when you're using a large filament with a smaller nozzle, it has to typically move a little bit slower, has to extrude at a slower rate. Typically just a little more wear and tear on the printer itself, just because it's having to really dial back what its intended purpose is. You could still use it, it just may take a little more dialing in to get it just right. Me personally, I have a 1.75 millimeter uh, printer. Number four is going to be your feed system and this is going to be deter help determine what type of materials you're going to be able to use with your printer. There are two different types of feed systems. There's a Bowden tube and that is where like on my printer you have a an extruder located at the back off of the hot end and it actually has a tube connecting and that's what guides your filament. There's also a direct drive system. That is where you've taken the extruder motor and extruder gear and put it directly on top of the hot end. There are pros and cons to both of those. Uh, pro for the Bowden is you're removing all the weight off of that top end there. 
therefore in theory it's going to have a little more fluid motion because there's less weight kind of carrying around there but drawback you can't print in flexible filaments too well if at all number five we're going to look at the max temperature of the nozzle itself so the nozzle being what the actual filament comes out of has to have a certain temperature in order to melt the filament depending on what you're choosing pla i've seen in my experience range anywhere from about 185 to about 220 kind of somewhere in there you'll see some of them say up to 240 uh, it's definitely going to be dependent on the printer you have uh, and that's something that you kind of have to dial in in order to get it printing just right. Uh, whereas ABS, I've seen that anywhere from about the 235 all the way up to about 280, 290. Uh, just kind of depending on what they're using for dyes, the quality of the filament, that's going to vary once again depending on the actual roll or manufacturer you're choosing. So you, you kind of have to think about what you want to use as far as material goes and explore those options. Go out there, see what temperatures they're requiring and make sure that whatever uh, 3D printer you're gonna buy actually can accommodate that. But number six is kind of the same thing here. It's the heated bed or the heated build plate. Um, some materials you won't need that such as PLA but it is a high recommendation to be able to have a heated build plate so that you can print in more than just PLA or I believe there may be one or two other ones that don't require a heated build plate even then having a heated build plate can be beneficial to things like PLA ABS that's going to be a little heavier duty of material it's going to need a hotter uh, build plate or it's going to need a heated build plate in general to prevent any kind of warping it's a little more finicky but it's a stronger material so keep that in mind when looking at 3d printers what are you going to be printing number seven is going to be your layer resolution now layer resolution is going to be how thick or thin each layer is that you're drawing out so if you're going for something simple you're making a box the layer resolution isn't going to have as much of an impact it's just going to have the visible lines as it's applying the material as it goes up whereas if you're doing something like say a miniature for a game a finer layer resolution will actually give you a higher resolution model it is able to draw individual lines better because they're all going to be thinner and it's going to give you a higher quality so keep in mind what you're going to be printing again I and mean, that's what this whole thing is about you're going to have to know or at least have an idea of what you want to print um, sla and dlp if you're going with like just miniatures like that's all you want to do that might be the route you want to go because their layer lines are almost non-existent whereas fdm and uh, FFM printing you're gonna have those layer lines there because it is material being added one on top of the other you will notice that with layer resolution you're gonna see a number of like 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 0 0.01 to 0 0.4 or 100 microns to 400 or 10 microns to 400 basically the lower the number the thinner the lines 400 microns is 0.4 millimeters 20 microns is 0 0.02 millimeters. Uh, that's my printer can go anywhere from 0 0.02 millimeters or 20 microns all the way up to uh, 4 mil, uh, 0.4 millimeters or 400 microns. And that's a pretty good resolution range for most of the things that I'm printing. And I'm sure I could give it, get it above that if I were using a thicker uh, print head. But for what I use, I honestly don't go anything over about 0.3 at the thickest. Number eight is going to be your connection type. So there's going to be two different ways of connecting to this printer right out of a box or right after assembly. And one is either via USB or SD card. So the reason I bring this up is 
if you buy a printer that only has the capability of connecting via USB, that means that you have to have that connected to an external device in order to control it. So if you only have a small space where you're building stuff and you have your computer there, you would have to have your printer right next to you in order to connect to it and use it. Unless you were to go out and buy a Raspberry Pi, install Octoprint, and add a whole lot more work to it. Uh, the other option is using an SD card. With those, there's typically a control right on the device. You plop in the SD card, you select it, and you're good to go. And you can store that anywhere that has a power outlet. Uh, that's how mine works. It has a little control with the screen. I select it. I can keep that away from where I normally am when I'm at my computer. I can keep it in a corner. It doesn't hurt anybody there. It's just out of the way. So that's my personal preference. But I do also have a USB capable connection. So if I did want to add Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi to it, I can control it wirelessly. I would never actually have to go over to the printer aside from to remove the actual print. So. Keep that in mind also with what your plans are as far as where that printer is going to be located. Another thing to keep in mind is number nine when choosing a printer and where it's going to be is your build volume. So your build volume you'll typically see 200 by 200 by 300 or 220 by 220 by 285. That's going to be the physical area in which you can build. Uh, you know they, they usually measure them in millimeters uh, usually uh, you'll see a trans rough translation into inches on there. Uh, mine, I believe, is like eight and a half by nine and a half by nine uh, in build volume. So depending on how big you want to build something, that's going to have an effect there as well as where you're going to store it. So uh, I personally recommend going with something at least a little bit bigger than what you think you'll need so that if you ever have to print off multiple parts of something smaller, you can print multiple pieces at once rather than waiting for one piece to print, pull it off, print another piece, pull it off, print another piece. With a good sized bed you could print six pieces at a time, seven pieces at a time, two pieces at a time, depending on what you're printing. So, not, one other thing and aspect to uh, area that you more are going to need to consider is going to be the mechanical arrangement of the printer. Basically, it is how the printer moves. So, there's going to be titles to these. It's going to be a Cartesian XY, Cartesian XZ, Cartesian something something, Delta printer, all these different things. The main thing is you have to look at how the printer moves. For example, something on like a Prusa i3 Mark III. That is a Cartesian XZ printer. That means that the head of the printer moves in both the X axis, which is left to right, and then the Z axis, which is up and down. Therefore, the bed must move as well in order to account for the Z axis, or the Y axis, which is front to back. My printer is a Cartesian XY printer. Therefore, the head moves in an X and Y pattern, and then the bed moves up and down to account for your Z height. So therefore, whatever the outer dimensions of my printer are, that's the space I have to account for. If you have a printer that's a Cartesian XZ printer, then you need to account for, does that bed move outside the bounds of the physical printer itself? Uh, the Prusa i3 Mark III, you have from what I've seen, it's about two to three inches out in front of where the bed or where the printer ends. That's how far the build plate can go out. Same as the back. So you have to account for that space behind and in front. Whereas, like I said, with mine, I don't have to worry about that. It's all within that cube. So that's the top 10 things I think you need to really look at when choosing a 3D printer. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, at RealGingerTech. I'll be more than happy to go over any printers with you. It, or you can leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe there's something that I missed that you think is vitally important to choosing a 3D printer. Either way, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. We will see you in the next video.